Uh, this is Jeremy McGovern with the American Farriers Journal and the International Hoof Care Summit, and I'm happy that I'm joined by uh, Travis Burns today, who's one of our presenters at the International Hoof Care Summit. Welcome, Travis. Uh, hi. Well, well, thank you very much for allowing me to participate in the 2018 International Hoof Care Summit. Uh, my name is Travis Burns, and I'm an assistant professor of practice and the chief of farrier services at the Virginia, Maryland uh, College of Veterinary Medicine on the campus of Virginia Tech in, in Blacksburg, Virginia. Um, so I've been working here at the university as a part of the podiatry service since uh, 2010. Uh, it began with myself and Dr. Pleasant and the help of many other faculty members and, and support staff here at the, at the university. And, and since we've expanded and, and then uh, we've had multiple ferry apprentices or what we called ferry interns through our podiatry service uh, since 2011. But most recently in 2017, we uh, hired uh, an associate farrier, Paul Papadatos, to join us in a, in a full-time role here um, at the university. And we also currently have uh, two farrier trainees in the Advanced Farrier Certificate Training Program here at the college, which is a, a, a unique uh, one-year training program for, for farriers who want to focus on uh, therapeutic-type type shoeing uh, in their, their own private practices. Uh, one day, and so we have two participants uh, there that will be with us through through 2018, and and then obviously we'll be looking for more in 2019. Excellent. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, the lectures you'll be presenting, and uh, let's start. Uh, you'll be doing two this year, as well as a roundtable. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about your white line disease presentation. Yeah. So my white line disease presentation uh, will will cover cover many things. So obviously, white line disease is one of the the most popular cases we're presented with here here at the university. Uh, actually, I just came from a, a CE event downstairs and was actually talking about white line disease there for for our local referring veterinarians, and they indicated that it was again one of the number one things that they see. Uh, afflicting horses, horses in our area uh, throughout the Mid-Atlantic region, but but obviously it's it's something that's pretty prevalent throughout the the United States and and ultimately worldwide. Um, but it's one of the the more frustrating disease path pathologies because it's uh, a bit unknown as to you know its entire etiology. We have obviously a lot of um, suspicions and a lot of hypotheses, um, but but we do notice that. You know, obviously, through debridement and treatment, and the and the work of primarily a a, a team consisting of the farrier and owner um, can resolve the majority of white line disease cases. But when they become progressive or or refractory to routine uh, treatments, um, it's very often that we incorporate uh, a veterinarian into the group or into the team, or even a, a specialty uh, farrier into the into the team. Um, to work to resolve it. And so uh, for my talk at this summit, um, I will discuss the, the etiology or the idiopathogenesis of laminitis or some of the theories that are out there, some of the, uh, the exact types of microbes that have been implicated um, as to, to causing or, or resulting in, in white line disease, um, the anatomy involved, uh, the principles of treatment, and then we'll go through some specific um, uh, I guess treatments or specific techniques that that farriers or practitioners will use to to combat white line disease. So it'll be hopefully a complete picture of of white line disease. And once you understand the anatomy that it truly affects and and why it occurs, then it makes deciding the techniques or specific techniques for the individual case uh, a little e a little easier. So we'll go through some specific techniques and, and some, some things that we do here at the college with white line disease that maybe maybe other practitioners don't. And, and my hopes is that being in, in that classroom with uh, it's, uh, that, that type of intimate interaction, hopefully we can even get some advice or input from the, the other participants or, or, the, or the audience themselves. Excellent. Your other lecture is one I'm really excited about. You're pairing up with your colleague. From the from the vet college, Dr. Scott Pleasant, uh, mm -hmm. in doing a, sort of a back-to-back -back presentation on on uh, issues affecting the navicular apparatus. Can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. So I'm very, very happy to to speak and present with with Dr. Um, Scott Pleasant. He's he's been a great asset to us um, here at the university, and ultimately a, a wonderful asset to the to the fair profession as a whole. Um, so our our talk uh, there will consist. He will, he'll go first and lay down a lot of information on the anatomy and and physiology of the navicular apparatus, and then. Um, the idiopathogenesis of the classical forms of navicular disease, and then some acute injuries to the navicular apparatus, such as injuries to the proximal suspensory ligament or, you know, acute bursitis, things, things like that. Um, and then he'll probably cover some of the, the medical or the veterinary um, techniques used to treat treat those animals or those conditions. And then in the second part, uh, I'll be very excited about it to, to talk about specific um, shoeing techniques or trimming shoeing techniques that that a farrier will utilize and then also cover some of the ways um, that uh, a farrier uh, contributes to the team or the way a, a farrier works or interacts with with a veterinarian as as part of a team in the ultimate care of of the horse so and, and I'm sure dr. Pleasant will cover um, various things of the the team aspect within his his lecture as well but but the big take-home messages will be how to work together as a vet farrier team we're obviously going to use navicular injuries to the navicular apparatus to to discuss those those things and then you know we'll talk about the anatomy and physiology of the navicular apparatus the idiopathogenesis of nav true classical navicular disease, acute injuries to the navicular apparatus or the palmar half of the, the foot, and then we'll specifically go through the principles of treatment from both a, a veterinarian aspect and ultimately the farrier aspect of trimming and applying various different shoes or, or other materials to the, to the horse's hoof. Yeah, and uh, this lecture is going to be on Friday, uh, Tuesday evening, we'll have a round table. Uh, Allie Hayes of Horse Science is kind enough to operate three separate tables with with lectures. And you'll be uh, doing one with some of her models and, and previewing that talk for Friday. So it's a really great opportunity for everybody uh, to certainly network with Travis and, and get a preview of, of the, this talk. Um, so I, I uh, was... You know, in our, our recent issue, we highlighted some of our web successes, a, a video I was fortunate enough to go to uh, uh, the university and visit with Travis um, the year before. And uh, it's our number one video of, of a follow-up to a keratoma case. And there's always interesting stuff that you guys are doing there at the, the uh, vet college. What's going on right now? Um, so so obviously we, we still are, are doing a lot with, you know, cases obviously that's our our number one focus and and so still today the the most common things we see are white line disease chronic laminitis ultimately keratoma so one of the uh, revelations we've had over the last couple of years you know just talking about keratomas is that often classical presentation or what we were taught about keratomas was uh, that they present as you know recurrent subsolar abscesses in the same area or uh, they were found to be presented as lamenesses alone and then they were just kind of found radiographically um, and, and confirmed but we've also noticed over over the last you know year 18 months two years um, as a result of some of the research projects we were doing here looking at crenas that um, that keratomas are probably more prevalent than we we had ever imagined and that they commonly present uh, as cracks of the horse's hoof capsule. So when you see horses with, you know, proximo distal dorsal hoof wall cracks, or ultimately we even have one with a quarter crack. And when you actually radiograph the 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 distal phalanx and looking at the solar margin, you actually see see a keratoma. So that's one of the 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 things that we've noticed and probably changed in our program the most over the last several years is now taking that 65 degree DP or a solar margin shot of the distal phalanx when we're presented with cracks, um, and now having our associate farrier Paul Papadatos here here with us, um, we've been able to expand our clinical service uh, to a significant. Um, uh, deal as well, but but also it has enabled uh, Dr. Pleasant and I to to kind of begin the the last big big goal that we had wanted to achieve with the podiatry service here, which was to start to do some some research projects. So so in um, 2018, we as a as a team will be involved in at least three research 
projects that hopefully we'll be able to present later at either the American Farriers uh, Association because um, we've applied for funding for their their research fund for one of them or hopefully at the International Health Care Summit, maybe even the AAP, you know, to, to get information out there that's uh, being done or conducted um, at least as a, as a fair as a part of a research team, if not several of those projects being led by, by fairs themselves. Excellent. You know, I, I don't want to embarrass you. Uh, you know, you've got plenty to do, but you're looking for more. You know, I, I think <laughs> everyone, you, you're going to see Travis at some point. You see, you know him as a clinician. He's uh, accomplished achieving what very few Americans have to have done, and that's uh, obtaining the fellowship of the Worshipful Company of Farriers. You'll see him at the uh, uh, the World Horseshoeing Classic. So I, I think Travis is always, in my mind, one of the most complete, well-rounded farriers. But you're uh, kind of pursuing another challenge this year. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so this this year in uh, um, 2018, I am running uh, uh, for election as president of the American Fairs Association, which will be, you know, hopefully if if I win, a culmination of uh, a, a goal and a and a long long path um, throughout my career to, to hopefully lead the National Fairs Association for for us the the AFA and and I it will be my uh, time and opportunity to provide a lot of uh, outreach or, or basically give a lot back to an organization that I owe a lot of my, my career to. Um, so with, without the AFA, I, I don't know that I would have accomplished a lot of the things that I have. I don't know that I would have been able to you know, ex be accepted as uh, a member of a faculty here at the university. I don't know if I would have ever even gotten the initial staff job without the the AFA. I, I never would have met my mentor Paul Goodness and and other other great mentors like Andy Henderson with without the AFA. That's ultimately how I contacted and met met all those individuals. That's how you know I interacted with and met all sorts of different fairs throughout throughout the industry. I mean, the the AFA often gets. Uh, the rap or the stereotype that it's a bunch of hammerheads or a bunch of contest jurors or, or forgers and and my my vision of that or my experiences with that are that is not not true at all. I mean, I've encountered glue on fairs to you know other faculty fairs at, at universities like Mike Wildenstein, who has been an idol of mine forever. I first met him through the AFA and and you know and obviously the the great forgers, the great contest forgers, the the you know the great uh, administrators that that keep and hold the the AFA together and keep it moving forward. I've just been able to meet and experience a, a, a wide variety of of the personalities and individualities of the fairy industry through through the AFA, and, and so it is my hope to be elected president of the AFA, and and it is my hope to help uh, continue the work of the the great fairs and and uh, the founding fathers of the organization and hopefully continue to allow the the fa to succeed and hopefully push it push it further um into i guess modern day technology is, is one of the things that i would like to 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 bring into it a lot but it, but basically you know allow the the fa to have uh, a much larger footprint both you know locally regionally nationally and ultimately internationally because I, I firmly believe the fair industry with Facebook and communication things like Skype like this the the fair world is getting smaller and smaller every day and and we can we as the AFA have a lot to contribute to the entire profession internationally as well as locally regionally and nationally yeah I, I hope everybody can take away from that you mentioned uh, a couple of your mentors in there look for those opportunities for networking yeah, absolutely. No, the Hoof Care Summit is a is a wonderful place. You with the attendees, you know, at fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred fairs there, you can meet anybody and and everybody. And and again, that's a great great place to network and and all the time you'll spend spend with people. I promise you, I've been all over the world as a part of the fair profession, and you will not meet those that many people in such a concentrated area. And, and the marketplace there is is second to none around the world. You'll see things there you've never seen anywhere else. Yeah, and if you happen to come or you see him at the convention, I, I guarantee anybody watching this, uh, you'll find Travis to be completely approachable and, and one of the ho most helpful people that you'll run into in this industry. So. 
So, Absolutely. But thanks for joining us, Travis, and we look forward to seeing you at the summit. All right, great. Thank you. Right, thanks for care. having me. All right, bye. Bye.